Welcome to service one more time. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus and welcome to this Easter service. You may be wondering, why is pastor sitting down today? Listen, because I want to talk to you as a man speaks to his friend. All right, so this is a heart-to-heart, heart-to-heart conversation I want you and I to have today. The Lord bless you. Now, listen, if it's your first time here, I want to go register on the link below. And tonight, 7 p.m. GMT, Pastor Bola and I, we want to host you and they want to give you a special gift for being part of the service today. If it's your first time worshiping with us today, the Lord bless you. Now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I ask, O oh God, that you minister to everyone under the sound of my voice. Let the meaning of this resurrection find expression in the life of everyone here today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we say, Amen. Hallelujah. I just love today. I love, I love Easter. Why? Because 33 years ago this year, I gave my life to Christ. I'm telling you, Easter is, for me, means transformation. There is a huge difference in my life before meeting Christ, before accepting Christ, 33 years ago, right, and now. Jesus made all the difference. The fact that he resurrected and gave his life just for me made all the difference in my life. And so today, this morning, this Easter morning, I want to look at a passage in the scripture and I pray that, that through this scripture, I pray that I'm able to minister to you. And perhaps, perhaps if you are here and you have never given your life to Christ before, that you use this Easter Sunday as an opportunity to try out a deeper relationship with Christ in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. A very brief message today for you this Easter morning. The Bible says, Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to, this, came to see the tomb. Mark that in your Bible if that's yours. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his, and his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. Today I pray that today that you will seek Jesus. Verse 6 says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. Verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Easter, you know, this month in our ministry, we have tagged this month the month of transformation. Easter is all about transformation. From spiritual to physical to material, Easter is about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus and the transformation of life. And so you see in this, in this chapter, we see God turning everything upside down. Oh my goodness. Just the same way God rearranged my life 33 years ago, when I gave my life to Jesus. Trampling on death, defeating its power, and walking right through it. Good Friday, Easter Sunday. And God turned the grave, into the place of mourning, into a place of life and hope. Jesus turned the grave. 
from a place of mourning into a place of life and hope. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that just as my relationship with Christ has given me light and hope for 33 years, over three decades, I pray you find light and hope today in Jesus' mighty name. What are you going to do with the person of Jesus? And that's my question to you today. And we're going to be looking at Introduction to Transformation. What are you going to do with the person of Jesus? And we look at Introduction to Transformation. I'm so grateful I was introduced to this transforming life of Christ over three decades ago. The resurrection of Jesus is about transformation from death to life. And he invites you today. He invites you today to build for, to invite you and I today to believe in him and also make that transition from death to life. Praise the Lord. And in this very simple scripture, we see four simple steps that Jesus, that four simple steps we can easily follow to move from death to life. And I want to share that with you very quickly in this short message. Step one, we must face the places of death in our life. Yes, that area, whatever it is that represents death in our life, whether it's spiritual death or otherwise, we must confront the places of death in our life. This is the first step in deciding what to do with this Jesus. What are you going to do with the person of Jesus? First, we must decide what to do with Jesus. First, we must confront the place of death in our life. Verse 1 says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they came to see the tomb. So, first we must confront the places of death in our lives. Three decades ago, my life was empty. My life was shallow. I was looking for the meaning of life. I was looking for something that would give me fulfillment, satisfaction. I, it, wasn't, it wasn't until I met Christ, it wasn't until I gave my life to Christ that I knew, that I understood what it really means to live a fulfilled life. And so listen to me, brothers and sisters, you must confront the place of death in your life. The Bible says they came to see the tomb. They came to see the tomb. Whatever represents a tomb in your life, you must go back. You must confront it. You must see it. And just like, just like in the time of Jesus today, this is something not. This is something. This is something. Um, but most people don't like to do. We don't like to confront the areas of our lives where we perceive that death reigns. We don't like it. But the Bible says here, now after the Sabbath, on the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they came to see the tomb. We would rather, we would rather not face this place in our lives where we perceive, is, where we perceive that our, our life in that area is dead or dying. We would rather not. We think we, can, we think we can ignore them. We think we can push them under the carpet. Or we just think that it will go away. Listen, my friend, you've got to confront Anything you perceive is dying in your life, or everything you perceive is dead in your life. Three decades ago, my life, I was spiritually dead. And at some point, I had to confront it. Praise the Lord. We have all kinds of coping strategies that keep us from actually confronting the place of death in our life. We have all forms of coping strategies, from clearly admitting that, the, 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 from including admitting that they are actually sucking, sucking, out, sucking the life out of us. If there's any area of your life that you consider as dead or dying, today I speak life to it in the mighty name of Jesus. And perhaps this is one of the main reasons why as Christians we do not live the life we ought to live, the fulfillment of life we ought to live as believers because we just don't like to confront those places in our life that we perceive as, as dying. I know that today is Resurrection Sunday. It's not about death, but you know what? We cannot talk about resurrection without talking about death. We cannot talk about Jesus. Jesus came from death to life. He came from ruins to resurrection. The resurrection life also comes after death. So we've got to. There's no shortcut to these things. There's no shortcut. There's no quick fix. There's no bypass route. You and I, we've got to confront the dying areas of our lives. 
we will look inwards today. I want to encourage you to use this service to look at your life where you are now. Where are you going to? Why are you here? Are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Is, are you living the will of God for your life? Is this the perfect will of God for you? Where you are right now, is this the desire of heaven for you? I want you to look inward and confront those things. Praise the Lord. I am talk, I'm talking about sin, for example. I'm talking about spiritual death, rebellion against God. If you are here today and you have never given your life to Christ, I want to... Use this service as an opportunity to reconsider your spiritual health. I'm talking about spiritual death, rebellion against God. I'm talking about character death, where you are not what you say you are. Are you who you say you are? Are you who you say you are? What exactly are you when no one is watching? So I'm talking about character death. I'm talking about emotional death where you have no compassion for lost souls, you have no compassion from anything, for anything other than the things that you are interested in. I used to be like that over three decades ago. And so we're talking about emotional death, where it's all about you. It's all about what you want, what you want to get. You are not concerned about what happens to people around you. And so, and so we talk about emotional death here. I'm talking about financial death where all you earn is yours to keep. Where all you earn is yours to keep. You know, you don't care about people around you. You don't care about life. You don't care. You know, you are so driven by ambition, driven by, by your goals, driven by your desires, all right, for material prosperity. And we're talking about marital death as well, where the spark and the fire in your marriage has gone out. Listen to me. We have to... We have to confront those things that are dead or dying in our life. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about carnal lifestyle, where your body and emotions rule and dominate your spirit, resulting in feeding bad habits. Carnal lifestyle. The places in our lives where we continue to feel sinful desires, activities, and laziness that keep us distant from God. We must confront them. That's the first step. And the Bible says, very early in the morning, they went at the first opportunity. They went at the first opportunity to the tomb. They went at the first opportunity. Today is a great opportunity for you to come to the tomb of Jesus. Today is a great opportunity for you to reflect and look at the dying areas of your life and confront them. The passage shows, shows, shows us a very different way. Praise the Lord. These women, as soon as possible, they got up in the morning and they went straight to the tomb. They didn't care about the guards. No. They didn't care. Praise the Lord. And we should be like that. We should be like that. We should confront the dying areas of our lives quickly and early. If you do not confront them quickly or confront them early, it will only catch up with you on the long run. And we should do that. We need to go there. What are you struggling with? You need to go there. You need to go there. What are you dealing with? We need to go there. The moment we recognize that something in our life it's not the way God intends it to be. We should confront it. We should address it. The very first moment we feel that something is wrong, the first moment you feel that pain, my brother and my sister, you need to confront it. You need to. Praise the Lord. Step number two, let God deal with the barriers. Let God deal with the barriers. Step number one, you address it. You go to that place, you address the things that are dying in your life. Number two, you let God deal with the barriers. We read in verse two. Verse two says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for the fear of him and became like dead men. Praise the Lord. 
It's very interesting. I took the liberty to, to read Mark's account of this particular uh, verse. Mark 63 says, On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? I just love these women. I just love these women. They did not stop. They did not allow the possibility or the, 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 the fear of the stone or the possibility of being unable to roll away the stone to stop them from going to the tomb. No, they did not. In fact, they were already on their way to the tomb before they asked themselves this question. Now, listen very carefully. There's something, there's something critical here that we must learn. We, must, we, we may come up with millions and millions of, of barriers, reasons why we should not address the areas, uh, the areas in our life that we perceive as dead, as dead or dying. We may come up with many excuses why we should not confront that behavior, why we should not confront our, the state of our spiritual life, why we, should not com why we should not confront our attitude. We may come up with all manner of excuses. What will people think? What will people think? Oh, I have a name to protect. Oh, I will be rejected. Oh, I will, I will, I will, I will lose my respect. What will people think if they find out I am dealing with this issue? What would people think if they find out I am not who I say I am? Listen very carefully. The Bible makes us to understand that these excuses, there was no excuses, there was no excuses, there was no barrier that could stop these women from approaching the tomb. Not even the stone. But listen, None of these barriers can stop the life of Christ from reaching you. None of these barriers. And if you take the liberty to look at scriptures, you will find that the scriptures is littered and peppered with people who feel that they didn't deserve their, their, their encounter with Christ. The Bible says, what can separate us from the love of Jesus? And so today I want you to spend time reflecting Confront those dying areas of your life and do not make any excuse in dealing with them. And do not make any excuse in inviting Christ into your life to deal with these issues. Praise the Lord. And you know what? By the time they got to their tomb, they didn't have to worry about the stone. An angel came from heaven to remove the stone. I am telling you, my brother and my sister, God is waiting for you to approach him so he can do something about that challenge. God is waiting for you to approach him so he can do something about that concern. God is waiting for you to approach him so he can do something about your spiritual life. God is waiting for you to approach him so he can do something about your concern. Let us look at step number three. There's nothing that can stop you, that can stop God from reaching out to you. And nothing can stop the love of God from flowing out to you. Step number three, look and believe. We look at verse five. The Bible says, And the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has, for he, for he has risen. He is not here. For he has risen, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. The women were not told to just take the angel's word for it. No, the angel invited them, come and see. Number one, my brother, my sister, you've got to confront that dying area of your life. Whether it is spiritual, whatever it is, you've got to confront it. Habits, you've got to confront them. Number two, you've got to confront them and confront them early. You've got to come to Jesus and do not worry about the stone. Allow God to take care of the barrier. There's no excuse on earth not to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And number three here, the angel said, listen, come and see. The point here is that our faith must never be secondhand. Our faith must never be secondhand. Must never be secondhand. 
each of us on our journey to, on our journey to life, in our responsibility to decide for ourselves what to do with Jesus, receive the same invitation. Come and look. I received that same invitation over uh, 30 years ago. Come and look. And I tell you, my life has never been the same since then. July 4th, 1988, 6 p.m., I received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. From then on, my life has never been the same since then. I offer you this same invitation today. Come and see. Do not take second-hand information. Come and see. Our faith must not be based on second-hand information. Come and see. Praise the Lord. Come and look. Dive into the story. Ask questions. Search for answers. Come and see. Every two years, I take people with me to, to, the, to, the, nation, to the holy city, to the holy uh, nation of Israel on a, on a pilgrimage. And one of the highlights of our visit every two years is that we go to the empty tomb. And I tell people, come and see. Let's look into the tomb. Come and see that it is empty. It's always a highlight, highlight of our visit. Hey, listen, next year I'm doing the same program again. If you want to come along with me, go to gatewaychapel.org.uk forward slash Israel 2022. Now, it may be full by now, but I don't know. But you'll check it out. It may, you may still be lucky to be part of uh, the team I'm taking out on a pilgrimage to Israel in 2022. I say, come and see. Let your faith not be on uh, second based to be. Let your faith not be based on secondhand information. Come and see. Come and see the empty tube. Uh, allow and invite God to walk in your life. Allow the resurrection power of God to walk in your life. Allow the place of death to come back. Allow the Holy Spirit to breathe a new, new life into that area, to that problem area. Hand that problem over to Christ like I did over three decades ago. Hand your life over to Christ like I did over three decades ago. Hand your entire future over to Christ like I did over three decades ago. 6 p.m. took an altar call. Give my life to Christ, and I never looked back since then. Praise the Lord. I pray for the grace to take that step forward. And if you are here today for the first, if you are here today for the first time, or you are here and you are already a Christian, I want to take you, I want, I want to challenge you to take your relationship one step higher. What are you doing about those who are not saved? What are you doing about your world? What are you doing on earth for the sake of heaven? What are you doing about the Great Commission? He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Are you doing that? Are you measuring that? How are you doing that for the sake of Jesus? Praise the Lord. Next step, and final step, is step number four. One word, obey. Verse 7 says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, and behold, I have told you. Praise the Lord. One simple instruction. He says, go, go quickly. Go quickly and tell his disciples. Now, this is still the case today. We are only called to do one thing, obey. We are only called to do one thing, obey the scriptures. Obey the word of God. If you are here and you are a Christian, are you obeying the word of God to the full? Are you maximizing your relationship with Jesus Christ? And if you are here and you are not a Christian, I want to invite you to take a look. Join us. Join this dynamic faith. Praise the Lord. Now, here is the misconception. Sometimes we are told in life that the ultimate is for you to be your own boss. We are told that you should, uh, we are told that you can live your life to call the shots. Take care of number one. Be the head at all costs. Win at all costs. You know, plan your way through life. But you know what? I, I, I will say this, I will say this with all, with all humility. It's a lie. It doesn't work. As you and I know, it doesn't work. You know why? Because you have no control. You don't have control over what's going to happen next. You don't have no control what's around the corner. And so it's very difficult for you to plan ahead and depend on your plan. Leave divinity out of it. 
I tell you what, it will only fail. If it's not failing already, it will only fail. And I'm telling you this, as much as we try to be and uh, uh, beat our own path and create our own way, at best, you create an artificial life. One incident, one bad diagnosis, one betrayal of a trusted friend, and our lives become completely shattered. You need Jesus. He resurrected just for you. I want you to look at the dying areas of your life. From spiritual, to material, to financial, to your marriage, to your, your entire lifestyle. I want you to confront any area that you perceive that is not what it should be in Christ. Or any area that you perceive is actually below God's standard for you. I want to address and address it quickly. I pray that God will give you grace in the name of Jesus. Walking in obedience to God is the road to life. I chose this road over three decades ago. Walking in obedience to God is the road to life. It's the road to fulfillment. It's the road to satisfaction. Praise the Lord. But you know why? Because God is in control. God is in control. It, one word for it is sovereignty. God is sovereign. Sovereign. That is, he's in control. He's the author of life. He's the beginning, he's the end. He lives, he lives, he's timeless. He speaks and he talks about eternity. He's timeless. Praise the Lord. Our problem is that we want this life. We want a life in Christ. We want to have a, a fulfilled life. We want to be in control. But at the, at, but at the same time, we want to do it on our own terms. That's not how it works. You cannot live life on your own terms and be submitted to Christ at the same time. Today, I want to challenge you. I ask you that same question. What are you going to do with the person of Jesus? What exactly are you going to do with the person of Jesus? We come back to this same question. He's crucified. He died for us, died for me, died for you, was crucified. He defeated death. He resurrected today just for you. You know, at the end of the day, you have two options. You either accept or you reject it. You either accept or reject. There's no middle ground. You cannot sit on the fence on this one. And so today I want to encourage you to accept. I want to encourage you to invite Jesus into your life. And live the same life I'm living right now. Totally submitted, totally yielded to Christ. And I'm telling you, I am better off for it. And so I want to just um, bring this service to a close by inviting you and giving you this opportunity to give your life to Christ. If you are here and you have never given your life to Christ, I want you to just stretch your hands towards me right now and pray this prayer with me. I say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I give my life to you. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray, amen. And let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I ask, oh God, that your hand be upon everyone who has just prayed this prayer for the first time. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you plant them in the kingdom for such a time as this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal your purpose to them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And my friend, if you're already a Christian, I want to challenge you to take one step further. I want you to take on the mandate, the mandate of Jesus Christ of making disciples of all nations. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your children today who have showed up in service this Easter Sunday. I pray, oh God, that the full meaning of Easter find expression in their life, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is classified as dead in their life, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to it right now. I say receive life in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, the Lord bless you. Happy Easter. It's offering time. It's tithe time. And the details will be on the screen right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone responding right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I take authority over financial death in their life in the name of Jesus. 
I take authority over emotional death in their life in the name of Jesus. I take authority, Father, over any form of marital and relationship death in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let life come. Let the life of Christ come into them right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we ask that you bless this seed, that you multiply it, let it rain favor upon your children. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Love you, Lord. I'd like to invite Pastor Bola to join me as we bring this Easter Sunday service to a close. God bless you. Well, Pastor, you know, just looking at the concept of obedience when it comes to what we are going to do with this Jesus, wanting to live our lives on our own terms and still want to follow, but you saying today, it really knocks it home, saying, no, all you need to do is to obey the yeah, call, yeah. live the life in line with what he has said, yes. and experience the fullness. Yes, you can't eat your cake and have no. it. All right? So sometimes we want the life in Christ, but at the same time, we want to be able to live life according to our attempts. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Thank you so much for that Let's today. Bless you. What a great so message. What a great reminder <laughs> for Easter Sunday. Well, I hope we all live by this. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, once again, happy Easter. Happy Easter. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, don't forget if it's your first time of being here today, we want to host you. Pastor Paul and I want to really host you tonight, 7 p.m. GMT. Go register and we have a special gift for you this Easter Sunday. Yes. All right? Be blessed. Amen. Now, let's close the service. Yes. All right. We do this three times. Uh -huh. All right? First time all together. Uh -huh. Second time one and one. Mm -hmm. And the last one for you. Yes. Okay? Let's go. Surely, God's, God's goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, take one person by the hand. Yes. All right, one, two, go. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Right. So give your neighbor a good hug just like that. All right. All right. So put your right hand upon your forehead and let's prophesy together. One, two, go. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. May the resurrection power of God find expression in your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a great week.